Living in the inland northwest, one quickly discovers this is a region blessed with an abundance of diverse artistic talent. It's a fact recently highlighted by a respected art gallery in downtown Coeur d'Alene, Idaho. There, five highly accomplished area artists joined forces for a special exhibit entitled Points of Departure. One was Spokane's Ken Yuhaz, a neon artist with a knack for twisting the ordinary, like a 57 Chevy Fender, into something totally unexpected. Gee, you know, that Fender, it had something to do with, uh, Gibson made some famous guitars in, in the 60s called Flying Vs, and the V shape of this guitar looked to me like the Chevy Fender, so I put two and two together. And, um, I'm not revealing any mystic truths here. I mean, if anything, I'm, I'm, um, I'm sort of a cultural archeologist because I keep reflecting on objects I either know or could have known in, in my lifetime and really kind of preserving them in an odd sort of way. A draftsman by trade, Ken's artistic journey with Neon didn't begin until he arrived in the Northwest following a series of graphic jobs in California and Nevada. For Ken, Neon was an extension of his love of all things mechanical, something he developed at an early age growing up in Los Angeles. My father was a, you know, he was the guy that you'd go to there, the whole neighborhood would go and he, he would fix almost anything. And when I moved to Moscow, Idaho in the early 80s, uh, there's an art professor there by the name of George Ray who had been using light, including neon. Then he introduced me to a, a great old fellow up here by the name of Bob Williams. And I was already in business as a graphic designer. And as part of that business, I made a lot of signs. And he would bend the glass and I would build the sign and put it up and then eventually went to school in Portland and opened a shop in Moscow. And my skill set was, was great for neon, but bad for business, so that ended, uh, marriage ended, I ended up in, in Spokane in 91. The move would prove to be a good one. Ken would not only find the love of his life, but his use of neon would bend dramatically in a new direction. I live an unplanned life. I, I'm really not good on, on planning anything. And it just struck me one day when I had a, a Sunbeam toaster there was a screensaver that was called Flying Toasters. And at the time that I decided I would make a toaster with wings, I didn't even have a computer, but somebody liked it and bought it at one of my early shows. Then suddenly I had this opportunity to make different things out of different appliances. And I got into this particular steam iron, it's called a steam o -matic, turning them into um, airplanes. So, you know, all sorts of different things using these old appliances. Using neon to turn an old appliance or object into something it's not is no easy trick. Unless, of course, you're armed with the skills of a quality glass bender like Ken Uhaz. You know, it just becomes another tool in my toolbox. I construct things from scratch or I modify found objects and somehow fit the neon in these objects to sort of change the character of the piece. but you're kind of limited to the amount of stuff you can do with it. It's not like a glass blower who takes a blob of glass and, and then makes something completely unique. I have tubes. They're four foot lengths or five foot lengths and they're straight tubes and then they get put into these various fires and bent into specific shapes. And it's a sort of discipline that you really have to do it every day to get good at it. And you can have a good day or a bad day. I mean, you've seen Tiger Woods throw his clubs, and I certainly go through those days, and every bender does. So basically, you have a tube, uh, a metal electrode at each end, which is encased in a glass shell with the wires protruding, and you uh, weld those shells onto the tube, and then you draw out all the air via a vacuum pump. And when you achieve a specific vacuum, you replace the vacuum with the gas. The two main gases used are neon and argon. Neon is red, argon is a real uh, faint lavender color. With the addition of mercury, it becomes a bright blue. And the reason I use neon, and the reason I love neon, is just the bright colors. There's a pretty wide spectrum of colors you can get with neon, and the first time you flip the switch and the thing lights up, it's always the same feeling that makes me feel good. Like many artists, Ken Uhaz has a singular piece he's most proud of. Installed out at the Spokane International Airport in 2009, Ken's signature work is pure Uhaz, 
Ford begs two questions. One, which came first, the neon or the sculpture? And two, what is it, toaster or airplane? Well, you know, I would say it really depends on the piece. Um, the more complicated stuff, the, the neon comes much later in the process. I mean, it's always going to be there. The uh, flying toaster of unusual size out at the airport is a good example. I mean, that was hundreds of hours of fabrication before I ever got near the neon. I, I think that's how I utilize the neon. And it, it, it both lights the object and it completely changes it into something different. So if it's working right, if a person looks at this thing and says, wow, look at that airplane, because that's what I meant it to be. It, it, is, it is meant to be an airplane. And you just have to look at it for a second to realize, well, wait a minute. It's not just quite right. It looks like a great big toaster. How'd that happen? And the spark that pushes me into making these things has to do with taking the, the absurdity of a mailbox being an airplane and the fun is in making it happen. And I, I think I've been fortunate because people are, seem to be in on the joke and they buy the work. If you have an idea for Northwest Profiles, send it to KSBS-TV, 3911 South Regal, Spokane, Washington, 99223. Northwest Profiles is a presentation of KSBS Public Television.